The story of kimchi goes much further than just a foodie trend. In fact, it's been made the same way for over 2,000 years in Korea. And today, we're going to be taking a look at that process. Like all good foodstuffs, that process starts with gathering the ingredients. Now, while a lot of people think that since kimchi is similar to pickles, they can just use any leftover or lower quality vegetables to make it. But the thing is, not only does a huge part of kimchi's flavor come directly from vegetables, but more importantly, unlike brined pickles, in kimchi, the slightest irregularity can greatly impact the fermentation process, greatly increasing the chance of making bad kimchi. This is why, when gathering ingredients, the factory only chooses the absolute best vegetables or any other fillings for use. For this particular kimchi, this includes things like carrots, scallions, onions, and of course, some Napa cabbage, which is the heart of a traditional kimchi. That being said, it can include a whole manner of, including but not limited to, meats, fish, fruits, vegetables, and even some cooked foods. Regardless of what exact combination of vegetables have been collected, all vegetables now have to move on to the first station in the factory, the scrubbing and trimming station. Now, one of the things that can interfere with good kimchi, just like any other fermented food, is any impurities. This includes things like dirt, sand, stray leaves, and so on. All these have to be removed by hand by screening the vegetables as they enter the plant. The workers also make sure to discard any pieces that are too damaged to be used before rinsing all the vegetables under cold water. And once not a single speck of dirt remains, they finally move on to the next phase. Now, it's very important to note that while kimchi is without a doubt very forgiving in the shape of the vegetables, for a high quality one such as this one, it is necessary to clean the vegetable of any imperfections. This includes stuff like rotten bits, skin, seeds, any bits with dents or cuts, and of course, the stems of any of the vegetables. This is done by hand by these workers who manually trim the vegetables while peeling each and every inch of them before once again rinsing them under cold water. And after this second bath in water, the vegetables are finally ready to start the process of being converted into kimchi, which, of course, starts with shredding. While truly traditional homemade kimchi is made using whole buds of Napa cabbage that have been quartered, it is found that using smaller pieces means that kimchi paste gets deposited evenly without any fuss. This is why before the vegetables can be mixed and sauced, they are first distributed into smaller bits. Workers at the carrot station take their time individually passing clean pieces of carrot through an industrial vegetable shredder. All the while, the scallions are cut and diced by hand on account of them not being shreddable. As for the cabbage, since it is thinner and easier to ferment, it is also able to stay much bigger than the carrots and scallions. After the workers remove the solid cores, it can simply be sliced into long juicy strips of sweet Napa cabbage, the perfect vessel for the next item on our list, the kimchi sauce. By far the most important thing in the making of kimchi and the one that gives it the biggest flavor profile is the bright red paste that is used to cover and ferment the vegetables. This thing, known as the kimchi paste, can be made in dozens of ways depending upon the availability of ingredients and traditional recipes. That being said, in this factory, the kimchi paste includes a few traditional things. First among them is some ginger juice that is made by shredding some ginger and squeezing it under a press while wrapped in a straining cloth to remove all the super flavorful juice from the vegetable. It also includes some pureed onions, some fresh garlic paste, some plum extract, and maybe some dried fish, as well as the two most important ingredients, fish sauce and lots and lots of gochugado, which is a kind of Korean red chili flake that gives kimchi its spicy warm flavor, as well as its striking orange red color. All of these ingredients are combined together in an industrial mixer in predetermined quantity, along with some salt before they are beaten together into a paste with a texture somewhere between wet sand and mud. And once the desired consistency is achieved, the paste, along with the rest of the ingredients from earlier, makes its way to the place where the magic happens, the mixing station. Now, like any fermented food, the exact amount of ingredients can make or break the flavor, not to mention the safety of the end product. 
This is why at this station, the workers take a lot of care to measure and use the exact amount of ingredients for each batch. First comes the biggest ingredient by volume, the Napa cabbage. This is quickly followed by measured amounts of carrots, along with some scallions, which are used complete with the white as well as green parts. After this, the workers slowly add in the right amount of kimchi paste, some sea salt, and maybe some sesame seeds before measuring everything one final time. And if everything looks good, they can finally start to mix the vegetables using a dough hook attached to an industrial mixer. This makes sure that all the vegetables get distributed evenly while also getting the right exposure to the paste. And once everything has gotten to know each other and every single shred of carrot and slice of cabbage is fully saturated with the spicy paste, the batch is ready to move on to the longest and most important step, fermentation. While some people like to have kimchi as is with just fresh vegetables thrown around in a super flavorful paste, proper kimchi, like the one you and I enjoy, really gets its flavor and texture from the process of fermentation. And for that process to take place perfectly, the kimchi mix has to be placed in the right vessel. This is usually either a plastic industrial fermenter or a more traditional ceramic or steel fermentation crocker. These consist of a long narrow tube that is filled with kimchi using special ladles. These ensure that the kimchi gets distributed evenly without any air in between, which can be disastrous for fermentation. This is why once the right amount of mix has been added, the entire thing is weighed down by two semicircular ceramic weights that add pressure to the pasted vegetables, letting the vegetables lose some of their moisture, further decreasing the amount of air present. And after the weights have been added, all that's left to do is close the lid before pouring some water into a moat that surrounds the lid's rim, creating an airtight seal that prevents any air and bad bacteria from entering while also allowing fermentation gases to escape the crocker, reducing the risk of it exploding. After this, these crockers are left at room temperature in a dry and dark room for a few days and up to a week. During this time, the salt and spices in the paste slowly draw out moisture from the vegetables, which combined with the lack of air inside the crockets, creates an environment that slows down the growth of bad bacteria while promoting the working of good ones. And a week later, the vegetables have gotten softer while the flavors have really gotten to know each other, creating the best comforting kimchi known to man. And once the fermentation is complete, all that's left is the final step in the process, packaging. Here, the crockers are slowly and carefully removed from their resting places before they're gently opened so as to not disturb the fermentation gases. After this, a worker slowly ladles out the right amount of kimchi in airtight plastic or glass jars. These jars are made sure to also have as little air as possible so as to make sure that the kimchi remains pure for as long as possible. In fact, as long as it's kept in the fridge with a tight lid, this kimchi can last for more than six months. That being said, once the packages have been filled and closed, it is all just a matter of applying the logos as well as the plastic seal for shipment. After this, the kimchi can be shipped off to millions of customers worldwide. Click on any one of the two videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.